Welcome to the Quincy Access Television Studios. I'm Mark Crosby. Thank you for joining us for Good Deeds, a quarterly update where we look at uh, the registry of deeds and uh, relate that, of course, to Quincy and Norfolk County in general. We will uh, be talking today with the Registrar of Deeds, and that would be Bill O'Donnell. Bill, welcome back. Bill, you know, thanks, Mark, uh, and thanks again to Quincy Access Television for doing this show and to the students and the staff that are, that are filming it and putting it on. Um, 2020, it's a new year, and, new and year. I thought we would, a happy new year to you and happy new year to all the residents uh, in Quincy. Uh, what I thought is we would bring, uh, you know, it's uh, in January here, bring in the statistics and see where we were for 2019, and it was a busy year uh, at the Registry of Deeds. Uh, we looked, first of all, at document volume, and uh, the total documents recorded uh, in 20. Uh, 19 were 150,899 documents as opposed to in 2018 countywide 141,162. So that was up 7%, almost 10,000 documents. And Quincy kind of mirrored that. Uh, Quincy in 2018 had 13,758 documents recorded, and in 2019, 14,481, up uh, almost 1,000 documents, 723, up uh, 5%. So clearly the document volume was busy. And uh, the good news is total deeds, which is an indication of, of activity, sales, uh, activity uh, when deeds get recorded uh, at the registry, we track it. And in countywide, uh, they were up. They, they um, the total deeds uh, countywide were 18,125 in 2018 to 18,325 in 2019, up 200 or up 1%. In Quincy, they were, they were slightly down. Um, there was 2,214 deeds recorded in 2018 to 2,165, so down 49 transactions. So, um, you know, um, again, Quincy's a, a great place to, to live and uh, there's activity there. And when we talk to brokers, they're saying there's less inventory available Which for sales. Be, well, and I guess, in looking at Quincy, that would be a surprise because we see units being built quite quite frequently here in the city, so you wouldn't think that there would be a shortage. Quincy's very vi vibrant, and I'm, again, looking countywide. And as brokers say, you could have all, you. In po there might be pockets of inventory, but you have to price it right, too, uh, for sales. But I think one of the reasons uh, the, uh, the brokers are seeing uh, lack of inventory, even lack of inventory in Quincy, is that there's a, a tremendous amount of demand. Uh, you know, there, there's the, the housing uh, in a, as a regional uh, I issue is a problem, and we've seen it uh, locally. People are trying to, 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 to find ways to get more housing, um, you know, so that people have a nice place to live. And when you have desirable communities like Quincy, people want to live here. Uh, and the other interesting thing that I, I, I was looking at, WBZ Radio had a statistic that the in 1988, the average age to upgrade your home, so you're in that start of home and you, 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 you went up, you upgraded, was 30, uh, 36. And in 2019, the average age was 55. So people are staying in their homes longer. Um, probably people that might be renovating their homes longer, and uh, people might be getting in the market younger. A, a, lot of, a lot of younger people, maybe they can't afford to get into the market, or maybe uh, they're renting in Southie or renting here in Quincy. Um, but uh, that, that was an interesting statistic. And there was an economist, uh, Elliot Eisenberg, I, I follow, and it was real interesting. He said in 1981, the median age of the U.S. home buyer was 31. Uh, by 1989, it had drifted up to 34, and after a relatively mild 1990 recession, it shot up to 42. But then in 1997, it went back down to 35, and he notes that it's been rising steadily ever since. In 2000, it was 39. In 2006, it was 41. In 2015, it was 44. And he says today it's 47. So there are statistics showing that, you know, people are kind of buying houses uh, kind of later in life, or at least the average age. Uh, one thing um, I, I would point out before I get into the mortgages, we encourage at the registry through our outreach and on our website at www.norfolkdeeds.org for people who do own a home, whether it's a house or a condo, to get a homestead. And the good news is, countywide, um, homesteads 
were 12,546 in 2019 to 12,102 for an increase of 4%. But Quincy, and Quincy Access Television has to take a, a bow because uh, in Quincy, uh, 1,202 homesteads in 2018, 1,289. So that was a 7% increase, and I think it's outreach programs like here in Quinn, uh, on your show, Mark, we're always talking about homesteads, and it resonates with people. And it's, it's a good consumer protection. Uh, I'm an attorney by training. Attorneys have different opinions, but I would say 9.9 .9, uh, attorneys out of 10 would say get a homestead. So that, that was one. let's talk about a homestead for folks that don't know there there is an automatic homestead we should mention that as well yes and this this that statistic that we just went over doesn't track automatic homesteads uh, Massachusetts for the first time thank you local legislators has an automatic homestead but the protection is only 125,000 and it gets apportioned depending on how many people own it Which, but when you look at the housing prices now that isn't too much no in and, and, and uh, again it used to be 300,000 when I first started as register it's up to 500,000 so I would rather declare the estate of homestead the five fee is relatively modest, uh, $36, and in Massachusetts you have a, a right to declare in a state of homestead which sort of puts a picket fence around your home. So again, uh, it's worth doing it and clearly they're doing it in Quincy. Your neighbors are doing it, so if you don't have a homestead or if you want to check to see if you have a homestead, call our customer service at 781-461-6101 and we can look up to see if you have a homestead because so, some people might not know. Um, Another uh, busy, acti uh, busy activity, busy, busy statistics is mortgages. Uh, mortgages are uh, when people borrow money. Uh, in in countywide, it was 24,504 in 2018. And from January 1st, 2019 to December 31st, it was 29,740 or an increase of 5,236, a 21% increase in mortgages. And uh, similarly in Quincy, it was uh, 2,607 in 2018, 3,022. That's a 415 uh, increase in number or a 16%. So clearly um, uh, there was mortgage activity and, and we saw that uh, countywide. Uh, and, and we saw it in Quincy for the whole year, but even the last quarter, and uh, the last quarter is October, November, December. Uh, in Quincy, there was a 53% a increase in mortgages, and in countywide, it was 58%. So and sometimes November and December are slow months because of the, the holidays and, and things. So clearly, uh, there was a, a, a lot of uh, business taking place at, at, at the end of the year, and it shows in these statistics. And one of the reasons that people might be borrowing is uh, the interest rates the you know the Federal Reserve cut interest rates the interest rates are relatively low uh, certainly relatively low uh, I bought my first house in 1987 the adjustable rate adjustable rate was eight uh, percent so the the rates are relatively low and back to what we talked about earlier I think more and more people are renovating their homes they're staying in their homes longer and uh, you know, uh, for different reasons. Maybe uh, they, they're, they're comfortable where they are. Maybe they're in a great place like Quincy. They don't want to move out of Quincy. And uh, so maybe they're using the, the mortgage monies to renovate their homes, maybe put an addition on and to stay in that home longer. So uh, mortgages are definitely up. You recently uh, made the front page of the Quincy Sun For good newspaper. news, I yeah, hope. For, for good, good deeds, I hope. Good. For good <laughs> deeds. <laughs> it was, well, it was just that. It was uh, you basically talking about um, the numbers and why Quincy is you feel attractive oh, I, I think it's an attractive place i mean first of all look at all the the activity that's going on downtown the beautiful job you did to to incorporate the historical aspects of this city with the with the plaza the dedications to john adams and uh, um, you know abigail adams and, and john hancock i always I, I i always feel it's near the water any community near a water is certainly an attractive place to live plus it has uh, not only accessibility uh, to boston through the, the 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 T, the but also um, you're close to the highways. Uh, I mean, you, you can get to Cape Cod here. So there's a lot of reasons people will probably want to live in Quincy, and it's a well-run city, and it, it's, it's a city uh, that, that uh, you know, uh, back in the colonial times, uh, some visionary people lived here, and, and I think Quincy still acts on that tradition of vision and trying to make it a great place to live and trying to constantly improve, and I, I think that's why you see the statistics you do uh, here in Quincy. Um, 
one bad statistic we talk about, and, and the good news is it's going down, is, is foreclosures. It doesn't matter whether you're in Quincy, there's 28 communities in North Fork County, there's always someone struggling with foreclosure. And if you know someone in that position, have them go on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, because we have partnered up with a couple of nonprofit groups, uh, Neighbor Works Housing Solutions, as well as your own Quincy Community Action Program. They give help to people that are, you know, that are, that are facing foreclosure. They have literacy uh, or financial education programs, uh, financial literacy programs that help people deal with what, what problems they might have. And they give great advice and, and counsel. And on our website, we have links to the Attorney General's Office, which also has resources available. Uh, we should I mention that as I, I didn't want to stop you, but we do have some foreclosure statistics that will be on the screen countywide and then Quincy as yes, well. Yes, uh, we yeah, and I was going to, I was going to get, get into that. Um, the, the foreclosure deeds, which is the last part of the process, that's where a foreclosure has taken place and the uh, lender has recorded a deed. Um, in 2019, for the whole year, uh, countywide, it was 146. And in 2018, it was 221. That's down uh, 75 or down 34 percent. And in Quincy, hey, the good news is you only had 22 foreclosure deeds. Imagine that, only 22. Uh, but you know, if you're that one person or one of those 22, it's still painful. Um, and it's down to 14 uh, in, in 2019. So that that's good news. That's the end of the process. And again. Do not wait till they're having an auction at your house. There's a there's a there's legal rights and get that advice with those, uh, those nonprofit groups. Get it earlier in the process. Do not wait till there's a sale uh, or a, an auction taking place. There's plenty of opportunity before that. So this is a problem. Try to address the problem early on as a consumer. And one of the reasons, one of the ways you know you're in problems, you know, you're getting notified by the lenders that you're not paying. Sure. But um, what we've started doing uh, when the recession hit back in 08, 09, I said, we have to start tracking uh, notices to foreclose because that's our only involvement at the registry other than the foreclosure deeds. By law, if you are not paying the, the lender, the bank, and they start a foreclosure, they sue you in court, uh, they have to record a notice to foreclose. Part of the process is a notice to foreclose has to get recorded at the registry. And so that's the kind of the beginning of the process. And the good news is in 2019, countywide for the whole year, it was 463 notices to foreclose. In 2018, it was 612. That's a 24.3% decrease. So that's, that's good news. And in Quincy, there was 48 in 2019 for the whole year, January 1st to December 31st, and 61 in 2018. That's a 21.3% decrease. So we like to see the other numbers, you know, sales and deeds, you like to see going up. That number, uh, it's encouraging to see that it's going down. I do have a phone number to the Massachusetts Attorney General's Consumer Advocacy and Response Division card. And that number is 617-727-8400. Yes, and uh, make sure, make sure you, you, you get some help uh, there, that's for sure. And you had mentioned, of course, Quincy Community Action. Yes, and, it's, uh, they're, they're, your, they're your neighbor. They're here in Quincy. They do a fabulous job. And uh, uh, reach out to them. Um, and, and, uh, but just you know, make sure you reach out to somebody, that's for sure. Let's talk about uh, land document fee increases. Yes, uh, again, we collect the fees, uh, but the state legislature uh, increased the fees. It was signed into law by the governor, and they went into effect December 31st. I'm going to have you move your chair just slightly. Okay. You're drifting. I'm drifting. <laughs> but uh, go ahead. I don't want you to My drift. wife says that when I'm walking. I'm always drifting, <laughs> I don't want you to too. drift off the, uh, <laughs> off the scene here. But there was a fee increase that went into effect of December 31st. Uh, 2019, so people should be aware of that. Okay. We've put on our website what the fee increases are. Basically, it was a $30 fee increase, and that increase goes entirely for the Community Preservation Act. So, um, the CPA. CPA, and uh, you have one, it's been adopted here in Quincy. And one of the reasons they, they did it was, uh, you know, they have projects, and I think more and more communities adopting CPA, and they want to get the percentage up 
as far as reimbursement. So we collect the monies. When we are ordered to collect the monies, we collect it. If I don't collect it, the Department of Revenue, I, I don't need indictments. We collect the money and we send it to, to uh, the state as we are directed. And, uh, but that is a fee increase. The good news, as I mentioned, one of the uh, increases that didn't take place was on the homestead. So the Homestead Act is staying the same. So there's a reason for that. And even the, 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 you know, the reason is the legislature recognizes that it's a consumer um, protection and don't make it more burdensome on the consumer to, sure. get, to get an increase. Let's look uh, overall 2019 and electronic recording. Well, electronic recording uh, for your viewers, uh, when I first started as register, uh, they didn't have electronic recording. It was uh, it, um, put in by the federal government. It, it had to get okayed by the federal government and the state, the state government. Electronic recording allows us now uh, to take documents via the internet. So an attorney here in Quincy, uh, could do a, a closing. They go on our website because on our website we have every document back to 1793. We're completely indexed. So they want to make sure there's no last minute liens. When they're satisfied, they transmit the document. So the, the banks and lenders seem to like it. I know the Real Estate Bar Association of Massachusetts as well as the Norfolk County Bar Association supported uh, electronic recording. So they just transmit the documents and we record it at the registry. And uh, Norfolk Fort County is one of the few registries in 2017 we were the first registry to do electronic recording on the land court side and there's still um, it's been expanded to five out of the 21 registry districts but we've been doing it since 2017 and it's been seamless uh, again uh, we have to thank your local legislators uh, you know and, and again uh, you know obviously uh, majority leader Mariano's in leadership uh, you have uh, Bruce Ears uh, you have Tacky Chan you have Representative Hunt and Senator Keenan because uh, they allowed a bill, they, they worked on a bill where it allowed us to do electronic recording on the land court side because they had to change some of the laws to, to make that happen. So it's all been going good and uh, you can see the percentages uh, increasing. On the land court side it, it's, it's about 35 percent of our volume is now coming over the internet for recording and on the recorded land side which is about 80 percent in Norfolk County it's approaching or over 50 percent uh, but we still like people coming in and we still have uh, closing tables uh, with beautiful pictures uh, sent by the various historical societies and commissions to to make it a welcoming place I know we have a beautiful picture of the Quincy uh, quarry that was uh, you know we, we solicited from the historical societies and commissions and towns um, you know some pictures that they thought would uh, represent the various communities so so people are still welcome to come to 649 High Street in Dedham. It's a public building. We have 50 computers sprinkled around there. If people want to, you know, use the computers themselves, it's it's not just for lawyers, title examiners, and engineers. It's for everybody. And if people want to come for the closings, attorneys still do the closings at the registry as well. I know. Uh, I just want to uh, take one point that you had just mentioned uh, about the computers and. I know the registry does host computer seminars. Yes, please check our website. We're, we're trying. We're going to set one up in the spring. We do one in the in the spring. It might be uh, in May, towards May and June. Uh, one of the reasons we didn't do one last fall was that we were renovating the building. The building was built in 1903, and we were finally the, the re final repair and renovation project was completed in you 2019. Had a historical figure there as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We had we had John Adams, of President course. John Adams, there at that <laughs> celebration. Um, but check the website and uh, some people you can go online we're trying to bring reg the registry's records into people's homes and businesses if you go on our website um, you can look up all these documents whether you're doing it for business purposes or some people are now doing it for genealogical and historical resources it's all online it's in its free access and 781-461-6101 and then NorfolkDeeds.org. Yes, that's right. The first number is our customer service department if you have any questions. Mortgage discharges. Uh, always uh, uh, an interesting issue. We, we were just uh, at a couple of senior f uh, citizen uh, uh, agencies and uh, centers uh, this past week, and it always comes up. Mortgage discharges, you should check. I mean, uh, you borrow money, they make, you know, the bank makes sure the mortgage is, is there in case sure. you don't pay. But when you pay off a mortgage, 
you know, make sure that the, that the institutions are getting either a mortgage to you to be recorded or that they sent it to the registry themselves to get recorded because it's been an issue. And what we've done to try to make it easier for people because we've had a lot of people come into the registry or when we have office hours, for instance, we had office hours in Quincy, thanks to the Mayor Coke for having us uh, there. People come in and say, hey, I was told I have to get a mortgage discharge. What's that and how do I do it? Well, a mortgage discharge is a one or two page document that tells the world that your mortgage has been paid off. And uh, people are right. They say, well, shouldn't the bank have taken, it or sh taken care of that? Or shouldn't the attorney have taken care of that? And you're right, they should. But if they have it, a lot of times it's your property and you're finding out when you're going to sell the property or you're trying to refinance. So I always tell people, um, you know, uh, call our website or check when we're, we're in one of the communities or here in Quincy. That's what we do. And if, if there is a mortgage that's outstanding, a, you, you have to get the mortgage discharge. Now, I'm a great big believer in community banking. You have a community bank here, col the Colonial Bank. You go down, you get great customer service. Uh, they'll get you the discharge. You know, it's from 20 years ago. Okay, you know, they'll look it up. Some of the bigger banks, eh, you have to find someone that gives you customer service. We have a document on our website where has my bank gone, which gives you state and federal contact information to track down where your bank has gone. Because some banks have went out of business in the 1990s, other banks have merged. And, uh, and also we have a link to the FDIC so you can try to track down. You want to get that mortgage discharge, that one or two page document, and you want to make sure it's recorded at the Registry of Deeds because that tells the world that that debt has been paid off. And you also want to make sure if you have equity lines, they are mortgages. They are liens against your property. If you've, in your head, closed off your uh, you know, equity line tw 10 years ago, uh, make sure there's a mortgage discharge that's recorded at the registry that tells the world that that has been closed out. When you mentioned banks, there is actually a phone number from the Mass Division of Banks, 617-956-1501. That would be used to locate a bank? Yes, to get some assistance. Um, and, and again, we have that contact information on our website. But just to, to try to track down. And the FDIC has a nice website kind of showing you where has your bank gone. You know, uh, years ago in Norway, they had Union Warren. I think Union Warren is now citizens, but you can kind of track, track the merges and, right. and who, where did they go? Because even though it might be in a different name, you know, some bank took over that other bank. They owe you the, the courtesy, and legally they owe you the responsibility of getting you a discharge. Consumer notification, we'll look at that. Um, overall, that's been a, a service that's been provided by the uh, Registry of Deeds. Uh, I believe, uh, according to my numbers, 1,117 Norfolk County homeowners have signed up for this program. Ye yes, it's a free program. We, um, we were the first registry to put that in here in Massachusetts. And now I'm hearing all kinds of ads on TV about, you know, uh, protect your title. So, I mean, you know, um, I, that's a whole other issue. But what we did uh, with this free consumer notification service, you sign up for an email. You're not going to prevent the fraud. I always tell people that. But I always point out the FBI says the fastest growing white collar crime is property and mortgage fraud. So I've signed up myself. I get an email any time a document in the name of William O'Donnell gets recorded. It may not be me, but I check on it. The one time it could be me that all of a sudden, hey, that's my deed. I didn't sign that. Or that's my mortgage. I didn't sign that. You, we haven't prevented the fraud with this consumer notification service, but I can get on it right away. I don't think my parents checked their, their title and, you know, all the years they owned it. No one would think to. But people are doing things now. We haven't seen this type of fraud in Norfolk County, but it's happened in other areas of the con country. And, again, we're trying to, at the Norfolk Registry of Deeds, be proactive and, and kind of reflect what's going on in society. And, unfortunately, there are scams and, and people taking advantage. And the biggest asset we have are our homes. So, to me, the consumer notification service, getting that email it's a small inconvenience uh, to make sure in this day and age that something's not happening on my home. Well, I just heard a report that cyber crimes are up nationwide. Oh, that's that's a yeah. No surprise. No surprise, and and uh, you know people um, spent a lot of time thinking of ways to take advantage of other people, sure. and that's unfortunate. But that's the sign of the times. 
What um, maybe in the way of legislation uh, is uh, outstanding or well, is something I, I, we should look I, at? Well, I, I always point out and again want to thank Senator John Keenan. We have House Bill 1413 and Senate Bill 960. Uh, that was a bill that had a hearing up in front of the Judiciary Committee uh, at the State House. It just requires that assignments get recorded for residential mortgages. Um, so, you know, if, if, if my mortgage gets assigned five times, they, they the assignment should be recorded because we have everything on the internet now. So I can go online and look up and say, oh yeah, that's who has my mortgage. Because sometimes people call up and they know who they're paying sometimes. Sometimes it's a service group, but it's not the entity that, True. that has the assignment. And the funny thing is 20% of Northmore County land is land court. You are required by law to record assignments on the land court. So if it's good for 20% of Norfolk County land, it should be good for the other 80% in my mind. And uh, again, you know, the, the, it gets opposed up at the, the state house for different reasons. And and again, Senator Keenan is the uh, is the is the chief sponsor on both uh, both bills, and we appreciate it. And hey, um, you know, we just we just keep working at it. I see it as a consumer issue. Some people see it as you know a revenue issue that hey, these assignments should be recorded. That's revenues. I see it as a consumer issue that, that you know, you know, have them recorded, and only for the residential mortgages. You know, for, for just the residents. You know, I'm not talking commercial. Just re help the residents. Give them, give them uh, the ability to go online and see what entity has their mortgage. I know one of the uh, or two of the um, public service announcements that we ran, that uh, we worked in conjunction with you to get out throughout the county was the Toys for Tots drive and the food pantry drive. And, and I, and I, I want to say Quincy Access Television, you residents in Quincy, uh, I, 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 I know Quincy is a great place to, to live. I, I've said that uh, publicly, but you have a great, uh, you know, community uh, cable television show here. And it's a real Thank asset you. to the city. And there, there you know, um, that PSA went out countywide. So uh, the Toys for Tot program, which we've been, been partnered up for a long, long time with the United States Marine Corps uh, Reserves, and we thank them for their service, and we thank them for helping out in that, and we thank Quincy Access Television for getting the word out, not just on the Toys for Tots, but also um, for the food pantries. Because, uh, yes, we have a, a, a food drive, you know, as, as Thanksgiving comes into Christmas, and we appreciate, again, Quincy Access Television publicizing that but in the PSA it points out that if you go to our website at www.norfolkdeeds.org it has a list of all the food pantries and they need help all year round so the fact that you um, and, and your organization takes the time to uh, help us put that PSA together and it's out there and I think it helps not and not just uh, hopefully it helps here in Quincy but it's out there in the 28 communities that make up Norfolk County. So there's a ripple effect, and that's because of Quincy Access Television. And again, thank you. And as we close, uh, any projects that uh, the registry is working on that will uh, come to fruition in 2020? Well, we still recognize our mission is to make sure that we're doing the job as far as recording documents, doing it efficiently. We don't have any backlogs. Uh, we're doing everything electronically. We're still one of the few registries that are still doing it the old-fashioned way. We still print books, but everything's online, and we're back to 1793. We are working, and we'll talk about it some more. Um, we, we've done a couple of books for the 225th anniversary. There was a historical book. Um, for uh, the building dedication, we did another historical book, and we're, uh, we, I've been working and doing research, and we've been doing some uh, work, trying to put a veterans book together, uh, hopefully for November of 2020. So, you know, we've set some goals. The goal is to, to run the best registry we can. I think we have one of the best, if not the best, and that's because of the staff. Um, but we're also trying to put other projects together like that. Sure. I want to thank you for joining me today, uh, informing me, of course, and uh, through Quincy Access Television to the residents of Quincy. So thank Th you again, and, and we'll see you uh, in short order. Thanks, Mark, and thank Quincy Access Television. Pleasure. Thank you. And thank you at home for watching. You have been watching a program of Quincy Access TV. Please continue to watch Quincy Access Television for more locally produced programming.